You're cheering for me? What? I'll take that any day. Thank you, God, for allowing me to open my heart so that others may open theirs. Honoring discomfort, which is divine. Divine discomfort. Like, okay, first of all, it's an alliteration. We know I love that. It's the only reason I'm a rabbi is so I can be Rabbi Rachel, divine discomfort. Anywhere there's an opportunity for that, I will take it. <laughs> no, but when I read this month's topic, I was like, okay, well, that is divinely timed. As I think about everything in the world around us as a collective, what we're going through energetically, what I've personally been going through, this idea of discomfort and growth, and this inevitable knowing that discomfort is a part of life. And as things around us get more and more uncomfortable, I feel like that's where we're actually called more and more to make peace with that discomfort and accept this knowing that life is never really comfortable. We might have moments of comfortable. We might have moments of peace and ease and we can choose for things to be peaceful and easy. But sometimes things that are comfortable aren't healthy for us. Sometimes what's comfortable isn't what we need. It's just what we're too scared to let go of. And maybe sometimes in trusting discomfort and stepping into that space of unknowing, that space of growth that is uncomfortable. I mean, I feel like they call it growing pains for a reason. It physically hurts to grow. And when we're growing spiritually, that's painful. No one wants to talk about that, but it's true. When we're growing physically, it's painful. When we're growing mentally, it's painful. It's exhausting growth. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sometimes you wake up in the morning and you're like, I was dreaming all night. When do I get to sleep? When does the rest come in? But it's in that discomfort where I think growth happens. I think about the idea of a butterfly, right? And how, yeah, inside the cocoon, it's probably pretty comfortable. But the journey of going into that, taking your own space, choosing to hang from something, not knowing if something bigger is gonna come along and eat you, or if wind's gonna come and knock you off, but going into that space of your own cocoon, creating your own comfort through the discomfort so that you can emerge, I think of the symbolism of the phoenix, right? Rising from the ashes as I was making some notes about discomfort and divine discomfort for today's talk. The vision of the phoenix came into my mind really, really clearly. And I've had my own journey of discomfort and growth into a space of way more comfort, if that makes sense, recently, that all kind of started when I went to Lahaina following the fires. And I had this vision and kind of transported back to a moment where uh, I was with friends whose home was overlooking all of Front Street and Lahaina where everything had just burned. And the friend I was with worked in an art gallery on Front Street. She was dangling her keys that she still had for these doors that she would never open again. But she was working on a piece that was a phoenix. And she was like, that to me is what this is going to symbolize. That's all I can believe is out of this ash, out of this rubble, out of whatever it is, something bright and light is going to rise again. Hearing about, you know, Viktor Frankl, Dr. Frankl, and thinking about what's going on in our world as a Jewish person right now, where we're being called to really, really, really grow. I never thought I would experience and see anti-Semitism in my lifetime, the way that I am right now. Someone came up to me, one of my, you know, congregants, people, whatever you want to call them, friends, <laughs> whatever they are, people that I love who are connected in my life through this capacity, came up to me at the beach the other day and was like, I have Hebrew tattooed on myself and I'm actually scared right now. And I haven't worn a Jewish star since October. And we want to think that we're in this 
cushy bubble of Hawaii, but then they're spray painting swastikas in Oahu, and you talk to the Anti-Defamation League who explains that, no, it's definitely still happening in Hawaii. But we had a moment where I was talking about, well, I think maybe I'll start hosting some sort of support group, right? For those of us that are dealing with anti-Semitism or hate in any capacity right now, just for who we are or for being who we are, scared in any capacity. And then we started talking about how it would have to be invite only and kind of underground. And I had this moment of like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what my like ancestors had to do. Not even a hundred years ago. Literally had to hide from the hiding that they were afraid. And I can't help but think about my ancestors whose shoulders I stand here on, who've come before, like Viktor Frankl, like Abraham, like Moses, like Jesus and Mary and Joan of Arc and, you know, these, these people you think of who had to really understand that in discomfort there's going to be growth. I'm sure Jesus did not want to do what it was he was put here to do. I know for a fact Moses the entire way was like, really, God? Me? You're going to make me do this? I know that I have those talks with God very frequently, like, really? Really? I just thought the alliteration was cool. Rabbi Rachel, I didn't realize all the, all, all the discomfort that was going to really come with all of this. But when we go into that discomfort, that is where growth happens. We as a collective right now, for whatever reason, chose to be here. Like it or not, we chose to be here because we're here. So I have to believe that we chose to be here for what's potentially one of the most exciting times on our planet. I think in terms of spiritual time, right? And in Judaism, we're in the year 5784. And it's believed that in the year 7000, I've spoke about this before, something big's going to happen. That's when the Messiah is going to come in Judaism. We don't know what that looks like. That could be a new earth. That could be a person riding in on a donkey. That could be a whole new breed of humans. That could be aliens coming down from the sky. That could be all of us rising up in consciousness. I don't know what it looks like. If anyone claims they, they know they do, send them my way. I'd love to have a conversation with them. But when you think in terms of spiritual time, 7,000 to 5784 is kind of like a blink in a drop of a bucket, like a big full moon up in the universe that just phases through one time, that we were all put here to be uncomfortable with because it's the test of can we trust that discomfort. I think the test of our soul and the test of our consciousness constantly is surrender. Surrender to discomfort. It's scary. Growth is scary. I go way, way back to my journey before I was a holistic healer and a Reiki master teacher and a rabbi and all of these things to where I was someone that was told they would never walk again and was be paralyzed for the rest of their life. And it was surrendering to that discomfort, knowing that it might never go away, that began this transformation of being like, oh no, I'm a healer and I have power. And everyone around us is a healer and they have power. And we were put here to activate that right now. To now even thinking about what I've been going through in my personal life. Stepping away from things that I spent so long to build and grow. Because we as a society and as a culture don't value rest. On the seventh day, God rested. We're commanded to rest the seventh day of every week. But yet we're still like, no, I'll just leave my cell phone on. I got something important happening. It's just one day. It doesn't matter. But it's in that rest where we grow. So when we're able to step back and say, I value my own cocoon. I value my own rest. I value my own growth and personal inner formation more so than whatever is going in around me, on around me. We go into that discomfort of everyone around us telling us why we shouldn't do. Don't do that. Don't take care of yourself. It's selfish to take care of yourself. Rest, you have to earn rest. This is 2024, people. It's hustle culture. That's not how it is. It's when we can trust our own knowing 
that it's never going to be comfortable to make the decision that is best for the evolution of our soul. It's not, at least I don't think so. And I found for myself that the more and more and more I trust that discomfort, seeing the people who are there to hold you up when you can benefit them in some way, all fall beside when they're no longer at the base. But knowing that you can stand up for yourself, knowing that God has your back, and there's a repeating number, and there's a dolphin, and there's a whale breaching, and there's a monk seal just because you asked to see one. It's in those signs of look, the more you can trust that discomfort is God, literally is the essence of the divine, because it's what pushes you to surrender. And that's all we were put here to do was surrender. That's what faith is. Imuna is the Hebrew word. That's what divine flow is. Can you be comfortable in discomfort? Because the knowing that you will truly never be able to comprehend whatever it is that's so much bigger than us is uncomfortable. But it's in that discomfort that we find the divine. And now I get to share this rhyme. Okay. <laughs> Making friends with discomfort seems to be a gift of mine. That's how I am able to channel these rhymes, to choose to see the constant signs and trust that everything is a gift from the divine. Between discomfort and growth, there is no line, and we have been chosen. Now is the time. I feel like I know discomfort makes you grow. When you question reality, like, is that so? When you see the seeds in your garden grow, because you have chosen to finally know that your creator is your hoe, and you know your own boat you row. We can make it easy and we can make it hard. We all leave this planet bruised, broken, and scarred. It's like what doesn't serve us just gets charred, and we have to clean it, each little shard. Change is big, to say the least. Making friends with discomfort can feel like a beast, but in the end, growth has always increased. To go into discomfort seems like the way, to surrender to what is, just let go and pray. Trust the flow, stay out of your own way, and we know that the rainbow lives in gray. And from our creator we do stray, and source guides us back to keep ego at bay. To find comfort in discomfort in this world gone cray, integrity isn't easy, morals just fray. But we all have our karma, we all have to pay, and we will grow come what may. Our time on this planet, until in the ground we lay, there's no time for comfort as we dawn this new day. Growth doesn't come on a silver tray. It comes in the moments you choose, yea or nay. When you live in discomfort, not just say, you are the seed, you feel the sun's rays. With this full moon aglow, this I know. There are those among us who do it all for show. They don't care whether or not you grow. They just want to be high, and they'll let you sink low. When you practice what you preach, you do more than teach. And sometimes the support feels out of reach. But you know you're aligned as you watch whales breach. You feel the divine flowing through you with each excited screech. You choose to let go of those who just leech. You go into discomfort, rediscover your niche, and life just gets sweeter. It's the juiciest peach. And I have to believe discomfort makes us grow, and that we are the star of our show. And to trust it's divine, this we can know, because sometimes God just leaves me like, whoa, is there anything that you don't know? I've had to deal with it all more than I can tow. But merrily, merrily, this boat I will row. I'm not backing down. You can't break me, bro. The rise of the feminine claiming bitches and hoes. I see, I see history repeat, and I can't be discreet, as I feel like my people become obsolete. Because the karmic work we must complete, 
the divine discomfort we must meet. In here we are called the darkness to beat because a new earth we are being called to greet. We all have to get dirty, ground down our feet. Darkness or light is the question and you choose your fleet. It seems like discomfort is anything but sweet, but the signs from the divine are pretty darn neat. So in discomfort, we might as well find home or we will continue to wander and roam because it is inevitable, even though it is known, even though we can't always see where we've grown. Signs from the divine were constantly being shown in all shapes and sizes, keys and tones. Even in discomfort, we are never alone. If anything, this is where the divine is shown. We are all just spirit in a body on loan, being forced to grow our spiritual skills we must hone. The revolution that's happening is nowhere near your phone. It's in divine discomfort. Mahalo. Shalom. Thank you, everybody.